young Earth creationism is precluded entirely by dozens upon dozens of well-known facts of the natural world. From the radioactive decay law, the speed of light, and the nature of the geologic column, to the statistics that surround common ancestry, the fossil record, and our genetic relationship to the rest of the primates, mammals, and really just the entire tree of life. But so frequently I encounter what I am calling bite-size busts, aspects of STEM fields that entirely preclude young earth creationism that aren't typically talked about, but bust hard nevertheless. Be it geology, anthropology, astronomy, or physics, here we discuss the minutia of fields that leave young earth creationism out in the cold. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe if you like this kind of content, leave a like and maybe a comment, and if you feel like supporting the channel in other ways, you can check out my Patreon, my PayPal, or stores. Today we're discussing how gastroliths, or the stones found in the bellies of dinosaurs, preclude young earth creationism. Gastroliths are stones swallowed by animals to aid in digestion. Assisting in grinding, these rocks help mechanically pulverize swallowed food. They sit in the bellies of these creatures, cobbling and smoothing out until they are passed through the digestive tract, vomited back up, or the animal dies. Animals living today utilize gastroliths, including alligators, crocodiles, birds of all sorts, including chickens, sea lions, and some amphibians. But more important to our point is that gastroliths are often found fossilized in the stomachs of dinosaurs. Just like any stone tools, or perhaps bone, gastroliths have a very high potential for being preserved within the fossil record. Of these, many are associated with various dinosaurs and other organisms from the late Mesozoic around 70 to 170 million years ago. Sauropods and some theropods appear to have used them in digesting plant matter, and plesiosaurs, perhaps for regulating height in the water column as seen in many modern crocodilians. In 1904, Barnum Brown described these stomach stones as digestion aids for ancient animals, but most scientists weren't convinced at that time that these stones were swallowed, even though they had the cobbled appearance of modern gastroliths. Once the stones were found within a fossil rib cage, though, people came around fairly quickly. So allow me to lay out the problem. Stones today can come from many time periods, but those time periods can, indeed, be identified. This can be done via radiometric dating if the rock is igneous, or it can be done by examining the microfossils within the stone. It can even be done by combining these two methods to the rock itself or to adjacent structures. Either way, we can get a general date on most stones. The stones in the bellies of these dinosaurs are nearly universally from Paleozoic rock. This means the rocks that they were consuming were formed, lithified, and reworked prior to the beginning of the Mesozoic, millions upon millions of years before they found their way into the gut of a dinosaur. The Ordovician brachiopods are found in some, Permian sponges in others, and really recent gastroliths come from the early Mesozoic have traces of Triassic wood. You can see how this might be an issue if you believe that all of the layers of the geologic column were deposited in a single half year. As we all know, young earth creationism requires a spontaneous creation event some 6,000 years ago, as well as a global flood event some 4,400 years ago that is responsible for all layers of the geologic column from the Cambrian to the Cretaceous, as well as their fossils, every impact event or mass extinction signature within said layers, the current positioning of the continents, the state of decay of all radioactive elements, and finally, the various levels of diversity for all extant life. But suggesting that the flood is responsible for both gastroliths and the dinosaurs that they are found within is entirely untenable, which is why they're not really touched on by many, if any, creationists. Geoscientist Jonathan Baker, in his assessment of gastroliths and why they're so problematic for young earth creationism, proposed that creationists would probably respond with something like this. Quote, Perhaps in the beginning stages of the flood, some marine and terrestrial life forms were buried in sediment, which immediately hardened into solid rock. A few days later, the rock was broken up into neat little cobbles, which were consumed by hungry dinosaurs with weak stomachs. Then accelerated digestive decay turned these cobbles into polished, rounded, 
fossiliferous stones which are now preserved in the rib cages of well-known dinosaurs." Unquote. But not a single stage of this is even remotely reasonable. After an organism is buried by sand, silt, mud, lime, or any other type of sediment, that sediment must harden. As we discussed in the limestone video, lithification is not a quick process as sediments must compact under pressure, expel conate fluids, and gradually become solid rock. Essentially, lithification is a process of pericity destruction through the compaction and cementation. Lithification includes all of the processes which convert unconsolidated sediments into sedimentary rocks. But after lithification occurs, the rock must be smashed into pieces, but not too many pieces, the hungry dinosaurs need land to walk on, that must also be at least bite-sized in some places. These cobbles must be smoothed and rounded in the animal's stomach in just a few hours or days in order to be buried with the dinosaur when the flood eventually overtook it. Don't ask the details about how the dinosaurs unilaterally survived longer than, say, the synapsids, or why there is a bias within dinosaur groups that also appears to mimic evolutionary history. And on top of that, the radioactive decay must be accelerated in order to explain away the current dates that we get. And since all elements in all rocks had to have been accelerated, it means that rocks that were already undergoing accelerated nuclear decay according to creationists had to continue that decay, releasing lethal heat and radiation from within the bellies of the dinosaurs that they are found in. The dinosaurs could not have eaten the stones before the flood started because they are rocks dated to period smack dab in the middle of the flood. So under the young earth creationist stance, they had to have been consumed during the midst of a global catastrophe that killed everything on the face of the earth. Perhaps they might propose that the radiation and heat was too much for these dinosaurs and killed many of them, that they were just driven to eat the rocks regardless because they needed help with digestion and these were the only rocks around. Of course, this doesn't work because the stones had to be in actively moving bellies of the animals long enough in order to smooth out. So the stones that were consumed by these dinosaurs did not kill them. Gastric stones, as small and as hilarious as they may be, present a very fun preclusion of young earth creationism by geology and paleontology. I'm actually not really sure what the response to this bust would be. I can't think of a workaround to the problems presented in this particular bust that would even remotely be reasonable to propose, especially to explain away the prevalence of the gastroliths that we find. But I'm sure whatever it is, it's going to be silly, ridiculous, and buck wild. And so join me next time, my gentle and, of course, very modern apes, for another bite-sized bust to some big pseudoscience. <laughs>